Now I want to introduce event-driven architectures. While I talked about event-sourced systems in the last episodes, and it actually makes a lot of sense to combine event-sourced system with event-driven architectures, the motivations for both of them are actually quite different. And as event-sourced systems can be applied in an old consistent transactional way using only one system and a monolithic system, actually event-driven architectures have um, the motivation of having distributed systems. So in an event-driven architecture, and for some reason whatsoever, you have to have a distributed um, system and they communicate with each other. And if, and that's my take on the microservice debate, you have some requirement for splitting up an application in several systems or for having several systems for uh, any reason whatsoever, then event-driven architectures help you solving the problems of distributed uh, systems and eventually consistency. Because and the CAP theorem, con um, consistency, availability, partition tolerance, is the reason why well, distributed transactions do not scale. So distributed systems are, even, are either um, fully consistent or um, scalable. And you probably want to choose scalability. And having that said, that introduces um, eventually consistency. So event-driven architectures um, basically split up your use cases and your transactions into several transactions that are then handled in the systems independently and communicate with each other using events. That means you do not use distributed transactions and send one request to one system and then wait synchronously rather than you send an event to the other system and then eventually that gets handled and probably you get notified and or in event back so you communicate with each other using events that's basically all and these events have to be published and transmitted reliably so let me give an example of a distributed uh, event driven system if you remember the uh, restaurant and burger story, so a customer wants to order, order a burger at a restaurant, then this is eventually consistent. As I said in the episode about the relation to the eventually consistent real world. So if you think of it, it's also actually event driven. If you just communicate with each other um, using the events that something happened, for, for example, in the kitchen, some order was placed using this information and then please uh, please do it and the point about the reliability is that you if you be um, if you are able to send an event want to rely on that something happens and this is the transactional part in it so you don't fully wait on the full transaction to be processed rather than you just send the event and then you can re rely upon that eventually something happens. For example, you order the burger at a restaurant, right? And then this order gets accepted. So you can publish the event or you can send a command um, without getting an error. And then you should rely on that two things happen. Either you get your prepared burger or for some reason you get then later on notified that your order unfortunately wasn't possible. But what you don't um, want to do that you get no response at all and this is the important thing that you have to make sure by building these applications that at least the publishing and later on the handling of the event driven is done in a reliable way because on distributed systems and in network anything may go wrong anytime and eventually it will go wrong so you have to handle it and you have to be sure that the events get published in a transactional way so if I'm um, able to publish an event, then I want to rely on that something eventually happens and it gets handled. And the whole style of event uh, of communicating with events is basically the concept of um, event-driven system and, and systems and event-driven architectures.